Hello, my name is Katherine Rounke, and today I want to look at the Oliviari case at the end of chapter 7. So in this case study, Dr. Nancy Oliviari is the head of the hemoglobinopathy um, project or program at the Hospital for Sick Children, which is the teaching hospital for the University of Toronto. And as she's there, she is um, willing to join Apotex and do this clinical drug trial. And um, as a part of that, she was asked to sign a confidentiality form or a gag clause that she would not share any unauthorized um, parts of her findings for the next trial period and three years following. Things start off fairly well, and originally Dr. Oliviari has positive findings with this new drug. However, after about a year and a half, she's noticing toxic levels of iron building up in the livers of some of her pediatric patients. So Dr. Oliviari shares what she's seeing with Apotex. Apotex comes back and says that she is incorrect in her findings in the data. And um, Dr. Oliviari decides she needs to contact the research ethical board at the hospital that she's working at. This ethical board tells her that she needs to inform her patients of the long-term risks in using this drug. So Dr. Oliviari revises the consent forms. And then she sends a copy of the revised consent form to Apotex. Apotex immediately stops the clinical trials in Toronto and removes Dr. Oliviari from the chair position over the global trial. Another year and a half goes by and Dr. Oliviari and her research partners decide that they need to share their findings and publish them in an issue of the New England Medical Journal of Medicine. Apotex vice president contacts Dr. Oliviari and tells her that they will be threatening legal action if she does continue and publish this because it's a breach of their confidentiality clause in her agreement with them. So Dr. Oliviari goes to the Hospital of Sick Children and asks for their support, but they decline. She also goes to the University of Toronto and she asks them for their support, but they say because she um, signed this agreement without their authorization that they will not support her. Now what muddies the water right here is during this time, the Hospital for Sick Children and the University of Toronto are in negotiations with the CEO of Apotex and he is in negotiations to give a $20 million donation. So Dr. Oliviari decides she's going to continue and publish her findings and then things get really bitter between her and Apotex and her and her employers. In this um, bitter time, her employers refer her to the Canadian College of Physicians and Surgeons for research misconduct, and they have her dismissed from her post at the Hospital for Sick Children. Thankfully, Dr. Oliviari's colleagues start an aggressive campaign to support her, and they gather a whole bunch of signatures to ask for a formal inquiry into this case. After the formal inquiry, the um, Canadian College of Physicians and Surgeons found Dr. Oliviari's conduct exemplary, and the Canadian Association of University Teachers had also done an inquiry, and they found that Apotex had violated her academic freedom. That's not the end of the case, though, because Dr. Oliviari does get reinstated to her post, but really it takes the um, world-renowned blood disorder experts coming in, being interested in this research and trying to work out an agreement between this drug company, the universities, and Dr. Oliviari. So, lots of ethical questions in this case. First of all, was it even ethical for Apotex to ask Dr. Oliviari to sign a confidentiality clause. And while I understand that pharmaceutical companies want a lot of secrecy around their new drugs, 
They need to be able to recoup the costs that they put into developing them. Um, I do see that there is a problem with asking her to sign this confidentiality clause, and maybe the way they need to do it is to change the wording. Um, but the way it's set up currently, or the way it was for Dr. Oliviari, there is no transparency on the part of the drug company, and um, it was asking her to violate the golden rule principle of ethics in not doing to others what you wouldn't have done to you. It is going against the universal ethics where we say certain things are just wrong across the board. This was subjecting people to um, potentially putting themselves in harm's way without telling them what kind of risk there was. And the virtue ethics that we have. Um, this could be seen in the Hippocratic Oath that you're going to do no harm to patients who come to you. So, Dr. Oliviari later says that it was a mistake to sign this confidentiality form. But what were the implications because she had signed it? Had Dr. Oliviari not signed the form, she would not have faced an ethical dilemma. She would continue on with her obligation and her duty to her patients to share risks that she saw, to pursue the best health she could for them, and as a researcher to share her findings. However, because she signed the confidentiality form, now she's in an ethical dilemma. Is she going to uphold this confidentiality that she said she would and wait till the time period had passed? Or is she going to uphold her Hippocratic Oath and not put her patients in harm's way and share her findings with other people to keep them healthy? Those, um, that really became her ethical dilemma, and I do support the way that she decided she needed to resolve it. She was good at letting Apotex know where she was at. She was trying to stay in contact with them, um, but... Unfortunately, there were still legal ramifications. There were also a lot of conflict of interests in this case. Um, the first one being that while Apotex is having problems with Dr. Oliviari and potentially her publishing findings, they offer a $20 million donation to the Hospital of Sick Children and the University of Toronto. That in and of itself creates a conflict of interest. Then, the Hospital of Sick Children and the University of Toronto, while they declined to get in between Dr. Oliviari and Apotex, in the end they really do because they end up referring her, unfoundedly, to the Canadian College of Physicians and Surgeons, and they dismiss her from her post at the Hospital for Sick Children. So there's another conflict of interest there as she's working for these hospitals, and the hospital and um, the university, and they end up dismissing her because she is not supporting what they, their donor is wanting her to say. Um, in conclusion, I found this really interesting. These experts in blood disorders um, brought this as part of the conclusion that the University of Toronto was chartered with the task for coming up with recommendations on research public, um, publications and the conflict of interest and issues of academic freedom. So I did find that to be a positive at the end of this, that they are going to do more research and come up with recommendations so that this does not become a problem for people in the future.